This podcast is powered by The Plug. I'm your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco Madame, and I'm so excited to be here. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Hustle Bunny. What's up, everyone, and welcome to season two of Hustle Bunny. I am your host, Chardonnay, a.k.a. Coco, and we are here today with a very beautiful, very talented, very sexy Gloria, a.k.a. Titania. Welcome. Thank you so much. It is it's such a pleasure to be here. Um, I believe this is your first episode of First season- episode of season two. two. Wow, I feel honored. I'm so glad you're here, though. We have to start the season off with a bang. All right. And, <laughs> and who else better? Puppy. Yeah, right. Who else better um, than yourself? How did you hold up during COVID? I held up. <laughs> I held up. I um, Before dancing, I was an office furniture designer. Office right. furniture designer. So, like, I designed, like, custom reception stations and like I just like uh, designed some stuff at like Lady Luck Casino Mm -hmm. and uh, Ala Capri and I mean I spent eight years in front of a computer and you know and uh so I was glad to leave that and go you know out in the world and meet people you Mm -hmm. know see people again and interact with human beings and uh and then COVID happened and then there I was in front of my computer again being like um, is this lighting good? Is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I, I was there with you. So kind of tell us about who you are and what you're about. Well, uh, my name is Gloria Gray. I moved to Denver in 2007 on a scholarship. Uh, I went to UCD. I did really well. Um, I, I went there for theater and, and video production and I had a great theater career there. I, I've been asked back many times. I, I still, you know, like uh, I consider like a lot of my professors, some of my colleagues now, you know, mm-hmm. but theater, I don't sing or dance is the problem. I was like a dramatic actress. <laughs> Not, I wasn't even in a comedy then. So it was like, I'm a really great, I can make people cry, you know? Right. And, um, I just didn't see where that was going exactly if, if I wasn't going to graduate school, you know? Right. So then I ended up designing office furniture for eight years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you, well, with theater, did you want to do like, um, like stage acting or did you want to do more like film on film on camera? Cause I know when you're on stage, like you do have to have like the singing and the dancing and the. Right. Right. And I'm not. I'm, I mean, I quote unquote dance, right? <laughs> yeah, we both <laughs> quote dance. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not an athlete by any stretch of the imagination. I call myself like a, like a soft body stripper, you know, because like the hardest part of my body is probably the bottoms of my feet. <laughs> That and the kneecaps. I feel like my kneecaps, they're busted. Oh, you know, my elbows sometimes, too. I look at them. I'm like, what's going on in your life, Gloria? (laughs) Got to do some self-care. But one of my last shows, my swan song Mm -hmm. at UCD was this brilliant show uh, that at the end of it, there was a melee. And uh, I got to kill somebody in slow motion to Ave Maria while they were naked. That <laughs> is epic. Your face lit up when you got to talk about that. Yes. That is an amazing, like, how do you kill somebody in slow motion? Uh, very slowly. And <laughs> Ave Maria, that is an epic live. song. It was live. It was sung live. And then, like, so there's this melee going around, like, going on around me. Like, um, the play is called Big Love. And it's based on, like, one of the first plays ever written where, like, This father sells all his, or like, you know, signs off on this uh, arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm like the leader of all my sisters mm-hmm. and I'm not having it. Right. And so like we escape to like uh, Italy or something like that and they follow us. Mm-hmm. And um, one of my sisters falls in love, but the rest of them I convinced to kill their husbands on the wedding day. Perfect. So it's like, it's a big ceremony. We all come out. And then like, I mean, there were chainsaws and like drownings <laughs> and like, I mean. Where can I find this? Did I, They had to have recorded this. Well, you know what? It was one of the first productions that UCD did that had some nudity in it. So they did not, or if they did, it's in the archives, you know? Okay, like, just for them. They're not going right. to like. Yeah, they're not because, I mean, it's, it was a young girl that got naked on stage. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. And it's like the first opening scene. Um, but for that play, I had to do a booty dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I I had uh, gotten out of a, a really crappy relationship and I was living on my own. I had got my first lease on a car, right? Yes. And I was falling behind even though I was working full time and going to school full time. So I needed a job right? that I could show up whenever I wanted to. And by the way, they still repoed that car. <laughs> and I swear to God, it's the only bill I've ever paid in my life. <laughs> like, I understand. Yeah. And now I'm just living, you know, uh, you know, off the grid, but in the strip club, you know, you can do that somehow. I think all strippers are off the grid. You know, comedians too. There's a lot that comedians have in common with strippers. I feel like there's like that because our life is just a, it's a dramedy. Dancing is a dramedy. And it's also like a psychological thriller. Ooh, yeah. No, it's constant psychological Olympics. It is. And I don't think people realize that. you like, you don't know what you're going to walk into that day. You know what kind of people you're going to walk into that night. Like, you just don't know. No. And I feel like they all bring it there. They all, they're like, this is where we're going to congregate. This is where we're going to bring it all to the strip club. I had, like, last week I had this uh, devil's rejects of people I personally, 86 <laughs> one night came in. Like, I all of them. I remember that. And I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I need to get the hell out of here. I was like, yeah, this is not This good. is like hell on earth, literally. That's what it, that's the... That's what it's, I don't know. It's a weird time. You know what? That it, and one of the guys was that guy that I saw, you know, that where I was like, I didn't know whether to leave you there or to like hit him, you what, know? What was, I don't even know how to explain his first. He was like that. You explained it so well. So he was like a metal head, which is cool. You know, he was like the alternative, but he was very like, um, thought he, he thought he knew about the struggle. Yeah. He felt othered and he was. I, I grew up in the same city that he did. I, I had this conversation with him years ago. Yeah. And, uh, but it's like, he is what happened when you don't process that information mm-hmm. properly. When you try to, I don't know, like, he reconciled it in a very bitter way. Yeah, it was like an awkward reconciliation. And then he came back again. And then he was, like, f- forcing other people to, like reconcile with me even though there was no problem dude the first thing he said when he came up to our table was like i'm gonna get you a drink but not you two bitches <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay you're like damn like you like, gonna do it like right, that all right well at least you know the and lines then I was are like, drawn clearly here right you know? and then mind you he's nose to nose with me yelling about how he's educated and i lived the, what did he say I like lived your life or something or I know your struggle oh my god no and he kept saying things to you that were just so inappropriate like you know he's like you are a, a what was it uh, if he said Nubian I'm pretty yeah, sure he yeah, said he, Nubian goddess yeah, or something along those lines and I was like are you like are you trying to be nice are you like not trying to be like what are you trying to prove here and I was like confused and then he came back let me explain. Like, I don't think they understand. This guy looked like he came off the set of Airheads. A from- thousand percent. A thousand percent. Mm-hmm. I mean, with all the same, you know, Outfit. mannerisms and everything. And it was just like, and then he called, you know, you a Nubian goddess and like uh, talked about how he knew the struggle. And I was like, you know what? 
Brandon Fraser, you don't. <laughs> no, you, you don't, don't know the struggle. Do you really know the struggle? Like, okay, I was like, oh man, it sucks that it's so fucking slow in here. Like, what do you want? <laughs> and he's so like, the, it'll be and it, kind of person that never leaves you around. Like, no, like oh, will follow you around. I, I swear, you know what I said about that? That that he he wants to get beat up. That's the thing. He's trying to get he's trying to get some free services is what he's trying to get. <laughs> if he wants that, bro, I got six inches on me all at all times. Yeah, I can we could take you out. They don't want to be clear about it sometimes. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm just like, okay, can we have like an action action, you know? Yeah, like, exactly. And then can I treat you like a human after like we've, you know, right tallied up and you know, yeah. cashed out. Exactly. No, they don't want it. They they want no. the they want the hard way. Now they want you to be genuinely mean to them. <laughs> like, they do. They do. I want my Nubian queen to to go real down that road real quick and get beat the fight. You want a Nubian to devil? Step I don't know. On his balls and pinch his nipples. I guarantee you. <laughs> I ain't got balls anymore. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I mean, who knows if he ever had him to begin with? That guy. No, was, he was a he. Shout out! His name is Ted. Out of all the names in the world, talking. That's funny. His name is fucking Ted. I feel for him. Like I grew up in El Paso. Like yeah, um, I'm a I am a white Mexican. <laughs> yeah. I I eat menudo. I don't listen to menudo, <laughs> but I eat menudo. And like I grew up in an uh, environment where like. It was 99% um, Latin X around me. Um, and when I was young, my, my mom gave me some advice really early on. And she goes, you know what? Whenever you're upset at somebody, mm-hmm. like, and you feel like they're treating you unfairly, just try to imagine what they had to go through to, right. to be that way. That's some good advice. <sighs> she was full of it, man. She had so much good advice. And like... I, I mean, like, I wasn't unlikable. Right. Right. Definitely not like. Yeah. I wasn't like, I mean, I'm sure I could get annoying, but all kids do, right? Right. Every kid does. If your kid doesn't get annoying, then you should probably be checking them out and seeing what they're doing. But no, they didn't like me because of the color of my skin. And it's interesting because it, it was, I knew it wasn't something that they decided on their own. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, this is something that their parents, like, passed on to them. Just, like, you know, when they saw somebody of, like, you know. Because, like, truly, like, people in the United States historically do not have a good relationship with people that don't speak English. Right. It's just, like, their, that's, like, their, um. They treat them like they're deaf. Upper hand, apparently. They feel like Uh. that's, like, they're, like, oh, my God. But vice roles, vice verse. You go out to their country. You don't speak a lick of Spanish. You don't speak a lick of German. A lick of French, no, and but God a, forbid if they come here. That's a consequence, is what I looked at it as. Like the the treatment I was getting was a consequence of something that I had no control over. Right. And like my mom always told my mom had the best advice. She always told me uh, because I was worried it was my clothes. I was worried that like I, I didn't understand what was going on. In fact, I had a high school teacher write a book mm-hmm. and like he had a character based on me. And he was like, if she grew up anywhere else, she probably would have been a cheerleader. But because she grew up in El Paso, like and he described this crazy rocker chick, you know, yeah. um, I wasn't like exactly how he described. But yeah, uh, because of that, I became unapologetically myself. And that's amazing. Because I feel like I had the similar, but it was opposite. Being raised in like the suburbs as like the only like black girl diversity at all. So like I understand that, and then it makes you like a better person. And then you like that's that's where the comedy comes from, right? Because you've done, you've seen it all. You've been on both sides of like the spectrum, so you know, right? Like if you ask me, like if you ask the ten year old me, I'm like, this shit doesn't matter. It, it, like mm-hmm. you know your background like my family has a, I have great culture in my family like we opened the first Mexican restaurant here in Denver that was owned and operated by like Chicano people and it's a historical landmark we have a the family has a letter from Pancho Villa that shit doesn't matter to six-year-olds it doesn't no <laughs> like they don't care no they definitely don't so at that time like I felt like 
it doesn't matter what you, what you are. Mm -hmm. It matters what you look like. Right. And that sucks that we're like still here doing that. You would think like 2021, we'd level up, but we're still not. No, uh, because we have a weird justice system here in the United States. There's no like, there's no reconciliation. There's no like talking about it. Like in other countries, they have found ways to get past like these problems. I mean, in Asian countries, they're just like belligerently racist toward each other with no qualms about it. Like there's well, they're no, okay with it. Yeah. They're okay. But anything that's different, you know, like they no one no one likes anything that's like not there, like um like their je ne sais quoi. Like if it's not like even when it comes down to dancing, like a lot of people think dancing is way worse than what it is. Oh yeah. Well it can be. It can it be can, horrible. It could be horrible. And then again, too, it could be horrible, but it also depends on what that that specific person is putting themselves through. So my night is going to look way different than your night or another girl's night because you never know what someone you, every you're your own person. I mean, all the things they say about it takes one. That's the truth. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you just got to. You got to pick and choose and like there's like you got to learn when to like like cut your losses uh -huh. at a certain point like I'm got I'm a yeah cut your losses and be like I'm not I'm not competing with that. Big part of that's boundaries. Oh yeah. Boundaries. I can't and people are probably listening they're like boundaries like well what kind of Like how can you guys be sex workers and have boundaries? Like what does that even mean? And it's like no I'm still human. Yeah, like I've never fucked anyone that I didn't want to. You know? Exactly. And why would you? That's like, so like with the slut walk stuff that I do, mm -hmm. we're big. The big thing that we're trying to teach women is like rape culture is something of the past. Like mm -hmm. no woman should ever tolerate. Oh, just get over it. Like, this is just the way things are. The unspoken, like, hierarchies of, like, patriarch oppression, honestly. Like, yeah. Like, nobody talked to me. Okay, so in sex ed, like, was anyone, hey, what are you going to do the first time a guy tries to stick a dick in your ass? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody talked to us about that. Nobody. It was Pornhub like, did. A little bit, yeah. Pornhub talked well, they didn't. Well. They didn't talk too much. They didn't talk. No, they were, if you were talking, then you were not doing the right thing. Right. So it's like. It is like. A, it, yeah, and you just have to navigate this world with knowing that okay if you have sex you could get pregnant and ruin your life that's what they tell you exactly you know? and anything beyond that no one's going to talk to you about it no adult no no respect like it's just going to be other stupid teenagers like yourself just you know theorizing well, yeah on what anal sex is like you know what i mean and you know you never know what it's like until you actually try right and everybody's different everybody's different Oh my goodness. So like, <laughs> so the boundaries thing comes in into play because I realized like after the Me Too movement, which was absolutely necessary, but these two sides can't be fighting up against each other. You know, right. we, we can't just be canceling people every time we don't like what society did to them because right. they didn't just like come out of the womb being like, ah, I'm going to fuck everything. And you know, yeah. like they're, parents their brothers their their elders like it was implicit mm -hmm. that that was what the world was here in the united states that it was okay that that is the way the industry like um the entertainment industry period worked yeah that's a big thing so for but for you specifically what made you decide to get into comedy oh a divorce a divorce Oh yeah, and yeah, this is a whirlwind thing. Uh, so it and that play that was my swan song at school, right? Yeah. Well, shortly after that, I met this guy on Tinder. Now my maiden name is Gonzalez, mm -hmm. like the mouse. Okay, Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> yes. Um, I almost married a, a slowpoke Rodriguez. <laughs> I did. I almost became Gloria Rodriguez. But like. Um, my name. Every time I went into an audition or for a job interview, like I. When I moved out here, I would send out my resume and they'd be like, oh, you speak Spanish. And let me tell you, growing up in a place that's 100 percent, like 100 percent like Latinx, um, 
I took over six Spanish classes and uh, all we did was play Loteria and watch movies because everybody spoke Spanish but me. They're like, ah, we're going to not teach the one girl in the class. Right. Like I got college credit for Spanish in high school. And I was just watching, you know, um, like Keanu Reeves movies. Like, <laughs> and that was it, you know. Um, but that was, that was that. So, like, I I know all the Spanish for the jobs I work. Like, right, we're right by Hooters right now. I know all the Spanish for Hooters. Vente alitas, picosos or no? Mediano, sí. Okay. Un jarala bud light? <laughs> <laughs> no, mamacita, corona. So, it's like whatever you use, you know, and... um. Anyways, uh, so comedy, right. comedy, comedy, right? I was on Tinder mm-hmm. right after that play, and I was honestly looking for a place to hang out between um, after like a show, like a, like a theater thing, and going to work. Mm-hmm. And I'd been talking to this one guy that was pretty funny, and his photos looked like artistic. And he had oh, artsy. Yeah, he had that going for him because, like, most pictures on Tinder is like, oh, here's me with a fish. Oh, yeah, here's exactly. me with a dead animal. You know, uh, here's me with my dog. You want to date my dog? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm bald underneath this hat. Come and find me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I used to do this funny thing. Like, if I was going to go to someone's house, I was like, you got to send me a photo of your ID. Mm-hmm. So, because I'm gonna leave a motherfucking trail if you're gonna kill me. Oh, you know? absolutely! And this weirdo, he sent me a copy of his passport. He was nervous. I th- I don't think he'd been in the game for a while, right? Oh, but the passport has like all your information. I know how stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the dumbest thing. Uh, and um, I saw his name, and I was like, oh, that's a cool name. I was like, what's your name? Like, when I got, you know, to his place, I was like, what's your last name again? And he goes, Gray. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's a good name. Can I have that? And he goes, sure. It's done really well for me. And then two weeks later, I was married. Oh, wow. But, like, we got married with the intention of getting divorced. Like, I just wanted the name. I just, I was tired of walking into auditions and feeling like I had to explain how my face got with my last name. Like, no, I'm not married. No, I don't speak Spanish, mm-hmm. you know, um, like, and I became the white Mexican at all the auditions and I, like everybody, oh, Gloria, Gloria Gonzalez, mm-hmm. Gonzalez, you know, and like nobody says my name like properly. They're always like Gloria, you yeah. know, and it's Gloria Gonzalez, you know, yeah. Gloria Marie Gonzalez. I had a newscaster's name, right? Like yeah. that is totally, hi, my name is Gloria Marie Gonzalez. I'm reporting from downtown Denver. I'll be whitewashing all the Latino news from now on, <laughs> you know, and I wasn't going to be a newscaster. So that name, I was like, my email's going to be so short now. <laughs> oh, girl, tell me about it. Oh, tell I'm, me about it. I bet. I'm, I can't change my last name because I can't be adding all those extra letters and shit to it. I already got too much going on. I know. Your first name has so many letters. I know. And you know the worst part about my name is everyone thinks my real name is a stripper name. Right. That's Right? It, it's 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 hilarious. It is. <laughs> you know what? So when I went in for my very, very, very first audition... And I was in North Carolina and the lady was like filling out my paperwork and she goes, what's your name? And I'm like, Chardonnay. She goes, no, what's your real name? You can dance by that. But like, what's your real name? And I was all, that is my real name. And she goes, oh, oh, wow. And then she's like, I see your license. And she was like, oh, oh my goodness. Is that real? You know And I'm like? Damn, like it ain't that bad shit. Sorry. Your parents weren't creative. God right. damn. I have, so, a, I have a nephew named Zeus. He feels you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have a nephew named Sprinter. All right. And then I have another nephew named Zephyr. 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 If, if his name is Zeus and I fucked it up, but I think it's Zephyr. Oh, that'd be crazy if we both had family named Zeus. No, yeah. I think Zephyr's, I like that too, though. That's a cute name. I, I mean, Zeus ended up being real emo. 
<laughs> Perfect. I love it. Everyone went through their emo phase. If y'all can find me back in 2008, pictures, MySpace. If you guys can find my MySpace account, I always tell people this. If you can find my MySpace account, y'all can find me gothic. And I emo. think that's pretty hot. You know, like I, I love it. The whole thing. You got to You got to break out of your. Did you know? I just found out that, that Jada Smith had a like a heavy metal band. Like, yeah, it, she just started it. What? That's crazy. See, everyone has to, every everyone has to go through their dark phases. I'm still dark at heart, and in skin complexion. That's never going to change. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess following up with my like with your comedy, like how do you come up with material? Because you're like such an interesting, like well rounded. You've lived like such kind of like an eccentric life. Yeah. So like, how do you come up with your material? Is it just kind of like stories that you've had during your life growing up to now, or like every day, or Ooh. like? What's funny is like. My therapist suggested that I do comedy, like, um, cause uh, he had this. I don't know if you've heard of the Enneagram. No. It's like a personality test, and it ba- yeah, there you go. It bases you on what compels you, you know, like what drives you, right? And uh, the this woman that was the same number that I kept coming up as that I didn't think I was, you know, mm-hmm. she ended up being a stand up comedian. And I remember when me and my ex husband found our therapist, like. We Googled him after our first session and we saw him doing stand up comedy and we we're uh-huh. like, oh, all our shit's going on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, my ex husband actually left me in therapy. And I remember my therapist going, and I was just telling him everything that was going on. My cat was trying to die on me, you know, like, and, and my, my husband left me. I, I, uh, I just had an abortion. I was like, going through it right and my therapist goes because i found humor in all of it you know what i mean because like what the fuck else do you do at that point you know i'm like i'm feeding my cat through a tube and it's not (laughs) you know like fucking kill me um and he's like you're handling this awfully well have you ever thought about maybe doing stand-up comedy and i took this class with the the lady the Mm -hmm. lady that um was my number and um i don't think she ever liked me but Um, I remember when I wrote out all the stuff that, you know, she was going to judge, she goes, you know what? They're just really like kind of pretty sonnets that are funny, but they're not jokes. And like what we did was we broke down the formula of a joke and then it it just became clear. Like, Mm -hmm. so like your joke is you have a setup and the setup is the least amount of information that they need to know to get the punchline the shorter the setup the bigger the laugh you know some comedians like i, I want to say like john mulaney he's really good at interweaving small setups and small like you know yeah and then like all to one giant um punchline right and that is a finesse because in comedy nobody wants to listen to you nobody gives a fuck about you so you have to make them care about you in the shortest amount of time to where they're like oh I'll listen. Listen and then be relatable. Like a story that can be somewhat relatable, right? Like a story that's kind of like, not even like the story, but more of like the humor is kind of relatable. Nobody believes anything I say on stage because it's so not their life, you know? Well, that kind of goes into like my next, like who is your best audience? Like when you do your stand up, cause I'm pretty sure every, every comedian either bombs an audience or they have a wonderful time. Like wh- who is your audience? And like when, ha- what has been like your best experience with the crowd? Like how do you connect? Um, you have to make them love you in the first 30 seconds. So you have to do, you have to do something relatable right there. Mm-hmm. You know, like, for instance, um, you know your marriage is in trouble when um, you refer to your cat as the affectionate one. Okay, oh and my. so a lot of people could be like, oh, my God, cats are not, aff- like, that affectionate. Yes. <laughs> and, like, um, it, it makes, you know, people think, but then there's, like, there's so many different styles of comedy. But, like, I like telling the truth. And sometimes the truth doesn't always translate. So it's a lot of hit or miss. You got to get up on stage a whole bunch of times. Um, I remember I, I had this fantasy when I was younger. I, I, I thought I, I liked stand-up comedy, but I couldn't do it. I could never tell a joke without laughing before mm-hmm. telling the punchline. Yeah. Know? 
I, so I thought it was out of my reach and I, I didn't think that people thought I was funny. And, um, but I used to have this crazy way of making terrible ass decisions Mm -hmm. to be like, you know what? I just want to be on a stage and just be like, Hey, la 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 la. Does everybody feel me? And everybody's going to be like, yeah. (laughs) And then like after a while, uh, you know, there'd be one guy in the back going, okay, I kind of had something like that happen to me, you know, because it gets absurd. My life is absurd. And Um, And that's because on the Enneagram, I'm an individualist. So the thing that drives me is having the most unique experience that is humanly possible. I like that. I mean, uh, uh, some people need safety. Some people need security. Like some people need um, to be in charge. Some people need to be caretakers. Mm -hmm. I just need to make sure that nobody can replicate what I'm going to do in this lifetime. And I'll be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And so far, how have you been feeling about that? Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I'm You're all, no, one, no one can get this. Y'all can't, y'all can't get these trials and tribulations. I, so. I have made, I mean, I've, musicians, yeah, that's my Achilles heel, apparently. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we all, like, try to pretend, like, oh, like, every, you know how they always say, like, uh, in comedies and stuff, they're always like, oh, like, it's always, like, the guy with the guitar, like, the musician girls, like, want musicians, and it's like, no, I don't want that, and then you end up with, like, a fucking musician. He might not have a guitar. He might have a ukulele. <laughs> he might have a ukulele, <laughs> and you're not lying about that, my <laughs> partner has a fucking ukulele. Uh, I got... He's got baritone, soprano, ukulele. I don't know. He's got guitars. I bought him one for his birthday. But, um, I mean, I love my husband. Yeah, we love you. Yeah, we love you. But you know what? It's like sometimes you can go through things in life where you get the shit beat out of you, literally and figuratively. And at a certain point, you get to this age where you're like, I want to be in control of this relationship, like as much Mm -hmm. as I can be, you know? And, uh, I went through so much horrible shit that nobody gave me any good advice on when I was young. When I met Eli, I was like, you remind me kind of of me when I was young Mm -hmm. and you need a lot of help. (laughs) (laughs) Let me guide you. Come on. Let me take you under my wing. Let me just do it. Yeah. You know what? As women, we have that tendency to be like, all right, like I'm kind of done I'm kind of done with like the, you know, the older man, younger woman situation. We've all done that before, right? To where like some guy is like trying to lead you down. Normally it's not like a good path. Like if it is a good path, then good on you. But when you're like 19 and the guy's like 35, you're like, they're, mm. no, my mom, um, her second husband killed himself right after she had uh, his kid. And she had two other kids from another marriage. Mm-hmm. And she instilled in me. Like, he made her stay home, quit her job Mm -hmm. to raise the kids. And then, you know, something really unfortunate happened, and he was gone. She had to start from nothing. And she always told me, be as independent as you can be. That's my problem. I am, what do they call it? There's, like, there's a word for independence, but, like, not hyper-independent, but there's something else where you're just... I, that's my problem. I'm too independent. Um, but my dad actually taught me that. My dad was like, you're going to be independent as a woman. Like, that's the best thing you could possibly be. But also, too, like, when you try to get with someone, they're like, oh, man, like, you don't let me do anything. And it's like, because I got it, because I can depend on myself. Nobody's going to love me more than me. Exactly. I got, I got me like no one else got me. I know what I can do with myself. I know um, how to hustle. Like, I know what I need to do to get through my life. And I don't need, like, I'm like the person of, like, I want you, but I don't need you. That's love, though. Because, like, anything else isn't really love. Because, like, if you love someone, you truly love someone, you want them to be happy. Mm -hmm. And that means with or without you. Exactly. And they got to have, like, the person that I'm with has to be ambitious because I'm ambitious. I'm ambitious as fuck. Oh, same. I'm like, a, I'm like a quiet ambitious. I will just start doing shit and then it'll just happen. And people are like, we had no idea that's what you were working on. I'm like, yeah, but I'm always working on something. Yeah. You have to be. Oh, absolutely. I get bored easy. 
Oh no, I brought uh, I have like watercolors in my purse and stuff in case things Just in case. I mean my ADD kicked in or something like that and I'm like, okay, in order for me to get from point A to point Z, I'm gonna have to draw the Eiffel Tower right <laughs> now, you know? <laughs> that's how it is though sometimes. And then you're just like, Oh, either that or I'm gonna have to fucking blast some fucking Marilyn Manson. That's just how I get through my day. Wow, you know what? I've been on Marilyn Manson's tour bus. Have you? Was he on there or was it just like the oh, team? It was the team. Okay. And let me tell you, my best friend in high school, okay, she took me, my house burnt down and I fucking lived with her. I had no clothes or anything. She was like, she was obsessed with Manson. And we, um, we went to the concert, mm-hmm. okay, and I made sure she got backstage. And then there was this little short sound technician guy he was trying to get in my pants i was just like uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah yeah, oh. uh, yeah all right what's my name oh no you don't know my name okay oh, well okay. you know what and then raven got with the actual like stage manager uh-huh which is like i didn't know the stage manager and the sound guys were getting ass like that uh they're really not <laughs> um because this guy i mean this this guy like he was so into her he sent her roses he sent her to go to la to the last show marilyn manson show right mm-hmm. She was so obsessed with Marilyn Manson. When him and Rose McGowan got together, she cried at school. Oh, Lord. Okay, so, like, here she is using the stage manager just to meet Manson, right? And Did she ever meet him? Um, She didn't really, like, she, she passing by or whatever, you know what? I, she met his girlfriend at the time, you know? Nobody wants to meet the girl. She's like, you want to have a threesome? I'm down. Oh my gosh. I don't know what she did to this guy though. It was crazy. He like wanted to abandon his whole, like he had gyms back home and he was like, come move out with me. And she was like, yeah, you're it's pussy power. Ah, well, you know what? Um, well, they're going to be throwing in some extra shit. Cause you're like, I hope I'm hoping I see Marilyn. So maybe if I keep doing anal, <laughs> no one's on me. but if i keep doing a little anal i might i might I'm Marilyn. he might tell Marilyn about me and i might be like eh, you know just go hang out at the viper room does that still exist i not? wish it did i think too many people died overdose in that bitch i don't know we'll find out we'll we'll, we'll check our sources afterwards <laughs> we'll check our sources. can we just open up the viper room again yeah i, I mean i don't see why not like, like i mean well johnny deb poor guy like i said there are these there are these relics Mm -hmm. from the way things used to be right and like the thing is like in the 90s if a girl hits you you could hit her back and that's not the way it is no more you know what i mean some people think it is well i'm just saying that i know that's a fucked up thing but some people think it is i've been in abusive relationships where that guy was smaller than me okay smaller than me but there's something about the strength of a man like no matter how hard I go at it, I'd still end up on the floor. Oh, same. Trust me. I've been hit by a six foot seven football player. It is. I know the struggle. It's just like I was so mad. I thought, but no. You'd be thinking you're like, ah, you'd be thinking like you're punching it. Like you think you think. And I, like I said, this is probably not the conversation for the faint at heart. But like I said, we're, we're making our fucking tragedy into comedy today right like i always do i'm like no dude i think like my super woman hulk power is gonna come out and it just doesn't work Mm -mm. you can't body like for an angry man you cannot body i don't care how big or small that dude if he's small he's coming for your knees that this is why there are truly vindictive crazy women out there like women that because we don't we can't physically defend ourselves so i mean there's this whole breed of woman out there now that will go after you through your mama's house (laughs) she will go after your job she will ruin you as much as she can because she can't she can't yeah if we can't physically get you we're gonna mentally emotionally and life-wise get you you know soul i've had a lot of men tell me that i've ruined their life perfect right you know what i mean in fact i had one guy tell me it and i was like that's the least original thing you've ever said (laughs) but like luckily none of the guys that i actually ruined their lives told me that you know what i mean but i feel you the ones who just weren't ready for you oh man so how do you deal with like hecklers in comedy, because you know, like it's, it, I'm, I think comedy, and I hate to say it, it's probably still like a, like everything, isn't it? Still pretty male dominated. 
women heckle me more than men. Do they really? Yep. And like, I was at this open mic last week and I shit you not. The one guy that's like a regular there, he always talks shit when you're fucking on the mic, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, you, I, but this is what I do initially. I go, huh? What? Are you going to come up here? <laughs> yeah. And then like, then they back off because yeah, they don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah. They don't want to go up there. They don't have that. They want everybody to see their small penis. Right. You know? And the thing was like some woman after, like a friend of mine went up after me mm-hmm. and she told the, the, the host, she was like, you know, shut your shit down or fucking, you know, like you ain't sure or something like that. Yeah. Fucking. They were just going back and forth. But this guy at the bar, mm-hmm. not only did he think that she was talking to him, but she thought he thought that she was mm-hmm. me. And like I walked up to the bar and he started talking shit to me. And I was like, OK, I did not tell you that. But why would I have told you that at all? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, let's let's really look at the situation yeah. here, you know, but like. He was upset because I told him he wasn't shit Mm -hmm. when he was talking shit to me on stage. And that's crazy. That's, that's nuts. I don't even know what to do, but people love the stripper shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, designed office furniture for eight years. Nobody wants to hear jokes about chairs. No, nobody. Like I, I can't even write a joke about how boring office furniture is. I mean, the show, the office was incredible because it made everybody uncomfortable oh yeah right that was the key to it because that is how boring that life is <laughs> oh yeah you yeah. know ordering paper and paper clips for people like i don't know what the suicide rate is for <laughs> office suppliers but like it's not great like it can't be there's just no. the turnover rate might be higher than strippers i don't know probably probably strippers we come and go I've only put in two years and I feel like I've been there for like 30. Two years? Oh my goodness. I would have never thought that. I've only been dancing. I, I, you learn, you age quick. You can. You can. And it's this weird. Um, dancers well, just, listen to this, right? Like mostly like. This is mostly like, yeah, dancers. And clan, Yeah. Yeah. And men. Young ladies. I have some great advice for you. To get, if you need a little drink to get on stage, your stripping career is going to be short. Mm-hmm. You're going to have an end date on it because th- that's how it starts. Okay, I just need a shot to, mm-hmm. just to, you know, get on stage and they uh, loosen me up, right? And then all of a sudden, you can't go on the floor unless you're like, Lit. wait, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're blackout drunk before you even go to pay your fees. And I've seen it happen to, like, I've been dancing for since 2015. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of strippers, hundreds of women that I respected. And try to stay away from that because, like, at a certain age, Mm -hmm. like, alcohol is fun when you're young. Drugs are fun when you're young, you know, because it enhances your experience, right? Right. Um, There's a turning point for that Mm -hmm. where that shit doesn't make you better but it makes you worse. It does make you worse. And then that's like, that's really good advice. I didn't start because I'm 27. I started when I was 25, right? If I would have started at 18 or 19 years old, I I couldn't. And any girl who does, and and I've talked about this before on previous shows, like you have to, and I will always say this as many times as possible, but anytime you're going to do any form of sex work, or anything as a woman, whether that's modeling, comedian, dancing, whatever. But if you need alcohol or like any other substance to enhance, that means like you're you're not comfortable doing it. And if you need to do it to be comfortable, then like that's not the right industry for you. And you need to have a you need to have a sharp mind. And at 18 to 19, 20, 21, 22, like your brain, like if you if your brain is sharp enough to do it, good for you. But like at the same time, like the men are manipulative. The women that you're working with are manipulative. Mm -hmm. It's because everything boils down to money. Right. The girls are in there to make money. And if they're if they can. And there's some women, women in there who are there to be empowered. They, you know, they enjoy dancing. They go home. They make their money. They leave. There's women in there who have 
problems and addictions and they want to bring you down to their level because they don't know what else to do. And if you don't get down to their level, then they look at you some type of way and they like try and like whatever. And there's there's everything in between. But like you need to be smart about what you're doing. Like it is not this is not like child's play at all. Yeah. Your body is your temple. And like my dad once told me that uh, I ran away with some guy and I was like, we didn't have sex you know, not every guy just wants, and he goes, no, that's all every guy wants, Gloria. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, well, look at, lo and behold, you know, I learned how to capitalize on that. Right. And there's like a difference, right? Because people think like the strip club is like this whole crazy, just like dirty, like a place. And it's like, or they think it's really glamorous because they've watched movies like Hustlers or whatever. And you're like, no, it is nothing like that. If you guys think that stripping is like Hustlers, then you guys got another thing coming for you. Um, yeah, this ain't Vegas. This, this ain't Vegas. Like, and the burnout rate is so fast. Like the thing is, the emotional labor is heavy, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody that goes in there, you got to make them feel like, you know, king... Kong, you know, oh, oh yeah. yeah, you are, you are, you still have it because like a lot of married men go in there, not, not to get laid per se, but just to know that they're not, that they're still viable. Yeah. Like they're like, their masculinity is still valid. And if they come in there and talk to like what's out there, cause most guys think like, oh, like if I go to a strip club, like I get to see like what women are like, I guess single, everyone assumes that we're single and they, they, I don't know, like you said, like they like to be like still wanted like they said still like okay like if i ever did leave my wife or whatever like i still got it i'm still gonna go out here and mm -hmm. get it and it's like no we lied to you like you have a better chance of fucking a cna uh, th that <laughs> is the realest shit i think i've ever heard people are like oh my god like strippers like we're just giving it oh i will lie 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 i'll be like oh yeah i'm gonna meet you do all this and blah blah blah, blah. i'm like all right da, da, da. and then I, I i think i've been on my period now for like three years <laughs> according to some people I'm all, oh but i'm on my period you know it's funny i used to go on tinder dates and i'd go only on tinder dates when i was on my period mm -hmm. As a fail safe. You know what I mean? Because everybody makes bad decisions when somebody's like looking at. No, no. Like if, if, if we're fucking like you're fucking in it, you're in it. Yeah. You know, this is a commitment. Like you're going to. Ain't no, ain't no one way street. There's going to be a street. mess and yeah. I ain't cleaning it up. Exactly. Y'all get your clean. I don't know what you need to do. Get some little baking soda. Clean that shit up. Get How bad do you want it, buddy? Yeah. Oh, God. You know, and some people are like, I'm going to take it how I can get it, baby. Oh, no. Like those guys don't get that opportunity. But, you know. I love my job. I'm 37 years old. Which still fucking surprises me to this day. I mean. I like see you and I'm like, what? What? Because then like you see the guys that come in. They're like 18, 19, 20, 21. And like, uh, like they think they're all this stuff. And then you're like, damn, like I'm, I'm, I'm basically like your aunt. Yeah, dude, I know. I'm like, I can't take, and I even feel like that way, even be like, even though I just like started dancing, but like even being 27, I'm like, damn, bro, like. It's crazy. Like, it's gross because like the older guys really like, they like the girls that aren't fully developed, right? That's the big thing in Denver that I realized. It's, it's like the gross. older guys, they like the, they got the uh, daddy issue daughter thing going on. Now the the athleticism of some of like the girls that aren't like fully developed mm -hmm. I admire and like I won't say envy but like I I wish I could do that you know like the the tricks and all that because that is a that's an art form in itself right it is I just kind of gave up pole dancing like the actual pole dancing part I can do it trust me I can fucking get up there but I just don't have the interest and I'm like you because it's just like Denver's just not the place for it I don't think men I don't think the guys really appreciate the theatrics behind it oh I, I mean and the wear and tear on like your, oh yeah uh, look I Men like boobs and butts. I've got both of those things. If you want me to pole dance too, like you're making me put my life on the line in a way that I'm not. Do you like how for. these <laughs> ass cheeks look? Do you like how these titties bounce? Do you like this? Then come, let's go. Let's yeah. go. Let's go do some dance. I don't know what else you want from me. You like when we rub your fucking pot belly and your bald head and tell you how handsome you are and like really care about the job that I don't really fucking care about and I'll your wife you, and kids at home. The best pole dancers were those those girls that were lesbians in soccer in high school 
You know what I mean? Like, because they had the athleticism yeah. to do that. And then they became lesbians and like, they were like, okay, I'm going to go make money off of these fools. And they did. They made a lot of money off of you guys. Well, there's yeah. like a married lesbian couple that works there. Oh, yeah. And they are like, I feel like they make the most amount of money. Well, number one, the girl's like, I don't fuck with dudes. But the other one's like, I, I could do it. But I think like their thing is like they're lesbian. So if they do like dances together, they're actually really into each other. And guys like have like this like fantasy about it. Of, oh, like, yeah. I have. A, I can't. I'm not good at that part of it. <laughs> like I'm not because like I have my own boundaries. I know how a man, a man like. I go up there and I tell jokes mm -hmm. like you're all surprised <laughs> you thought you were going to get all this fun. I'm just going to sit here and tell you. Well, especially when women are sitting at my stage, because yeah. the thing is, I don't know, like people are always talking about women ran clubs mm -hmm. and in a perfect world. Yeah, I would own a club. OK, but yeah. but I don't know that I would fare well at a club owned by a woman. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like. Men have, like, you know, propped us up against each other for so long. Like, I, the competition, I don't think that it is a viable, jealousy is not a viable emotion for me. Mm -hmm. You're either going to like me or you're not. And I'm not going to do much outside of being who I am. Right. To make that money. Like, I can be maybe, maybe a couple notches more charming than I would have been. You know, yeah. but um, I'm not selling you those dreams. Like you're telling me things and I'm going, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. No, I'm I'm home all the time or I'm here, you know, like. Oh, yeah. A thousand percent. That's me too. I'm like, oh, yeah. And I live just, I'm, what do strippers do when they're not working? What do you do? Like, I, that's my, like, that, I hate that fucking question. I tell them everything I do. I'm like, look, I'm going to be at uh, this venue on this date. Yeah, I feel like I need to do that too. But I'm like, dude, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what, I barely care what you do. <laughs> that's just like my big like why do you want to know me for like is this like you're dating like we're not going out it's a fantasy it's a fantasy let it be a fucking fantasy yeah let it be and when okay so back in pagan times they had these temples of goddess worship and they were the original strip clubs okay mm -hmm. and the thing about it like um camille um pagala she's like a very controversial feminist, but she's one of my favorites because she has this different perspective and she is pro sex worker. She is pro stripper. She loves Rihanna, you know, mm -hmm. and this is like this skinny little white lady, you know, mm -hmm. like that t uh, teaches, I think in Pittsburgh or something like that. But the, the thing is she has this different perspective, but she sees what we're doing as the last relic of pagan times in this, in, in, in this lifetime. You know what I mean? It's the oldest form of work in the book I mean, it's never going to be out of sex alcohol and like the, like all the things that we like suppress are things that are never going to go away right and but the thing too okay so like in her book she talks about the act of goddess worship okay it's putting a woman because the woman's form is women look at women without necessarily being like sexually driven to possess them right and the thing about at the strip club is it's a wonderful experience until the viewer decides that they want to possess what they see mm -hmm. and then you ruin it you ruin it all you take away you're trying to take away my power as this experience as a, as a, a spiritual experience because like when you deal with me at the club as like a client that is what I'm giving you. I'm giving you an experience. I'm mm -hmm. making you feel something. And then I am showing you my form in an intimate way. Right. That you wouldn't have access to. If I was just out. Yeah. If this was just like a regular bar and you saw me on the street, you would be nowhere near. And like, that's like another thing too. Like you were me on the everyday basis. And I'm so sure like you on the everyday basis. No one's going to be like, oh, like she's a stripper. No one can look around and be like, oh, like, unless I go to the bank. But, like, normally, whatever, I got turned in all my ones or whatever. But, like, still, like, that's the only time. Like, you can't. I'm giving you a part of my intimacy that is sacred. And you need to respect it. Because there's so many guys who just think, like, ah, whatever. It's just what it is. Like, they get so. Because I, I read this. I read this thing that said that 
men lose, I think, 60% of their empathy if they're dressed, like if a woman has like a bikini top on. So if a woman looks somewhat, if they find that woman to be sexual or like sexualized, their empathy goes down by 60%. That is implicit rape culture. That is saying, because you are dressed like this, I don't need to have control of my male urges and desires and I can, I can try, I'm going to try to control that. Yeah. I'm going to try to control that situation by making everybody uncomfortable until I get what I want. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like we're evolved. Sorry. Like y'all can't keep keep using excuses. I don't care if I walk up to you fucking buck ass naked with my, my coochie in your face. Like if uh, that doesn't mean I want anything from you. Did you know that yesterday was international horse day? You know what? Maybe that's why that girl came in last night with her gangbang. <laughs> that was a lot. Like, that was, like, legit. Like, if you see a picture of a gangbang, like, before you click on it, that was a gangbang. Okay, but the thing, too, about this this poor chick that came in. Like, you know what? Sex workers, like, right now, okay, there's these, there are these levels, okay? There are mothers that are mm-hmm. sex workers that are making a living for themselves. Right. But in my future, you know, ut- yeah, this you know isn't- utopia... Every sex worker enjoys sex, and that mm-hmm. is why they do their job. Like, right. because it is work. It is, you know, I'm sorry, capitalist. Um, living in a capitalist society inherently um, promotes sex work. Like, it, it, I'm sorry, you cannot have capitalism without the patriarchy that has made my body. Um, subjectified to you know um rape and 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 oppression and you know just this the male gaze period like my value in this world is how pretty i am Mm -hmm. and if you're gonna have a capitalist society and tell me i can't capitalize off of that that's oppressive that is that is um what do you call it um predatory that is unacceptable to me and every woman you know what there's no difference between wives and and uh prostitution the prostitutes are smart enough to get the money up front exactly people are getting divorced in their 60s there's no promises you know like um (sighs) this guy came in the club the other night and i've seen him maybe like four times my entire career there Mm -hmm. and every time he comes in we find each other I, i mean after all these years and um, Ivy School graduate, married, mm-hmm. believes in me, though. Like, he really believes in me. And the last time I talked to him, my mom had just passed away. And when I saw him the other night, his mom had just passed away. And he's like, this is crazy. I'm running into you. And he's like, I burned your number because um, I was so excited about it. Like, it scared me, you know? It's yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And I'm like, look. Anybody that pays me a thousand bucks is my best friend. And I'm looking out for you. Oh, yeah. No, because, like, the thing is, nothing I have has just been given to me. Mm-hmm. And, like, he was like, oh, we should go to New York. And then you can, you know, you, and you can stay there for, like, how, you know. And, like, painting this picture of, like, uh, yeah. No, like, I remember um, when I went up to the lap dance, like, I was just so relieved to see him. And that somebody... Um, with that type of upward mobility, Mm -hmm. believed in me, right? And I was like, man, when when we said, I was like, man, I really need you. And as soon as I said it, I knew that that was not the truth. Yeah. I didn't need him. Nobody's given me anything in my life. Like, you know, even my parents, that's what they instilled in me. They were like, be independent. You, you're going to college. We're not paying for it. You know what I mean? Like, parents that till you want to go, you got to pay. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm going to do it on my own terms. I, you know, and what? Don't get mad if I end up at the strip club. I've been to school twice and I'm still not doing anything with any of my degrees. So (laughs) I'm I'm smart enough to be a stripper. That's what I got. Right. And you, you have to be smart enough to know when that, that's fading out. You know? Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm kind of on my last leg. Oh, even though I didn't do it. Shut it down. I'm like, you, you are. By far, one of the most authentically beautiful women at our club. Thank you. Absolutely. I just feel like I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's like there's so coming many. Out, it's just like so many people like and I'm pretty sure you go through phases, right? Because you've been doing it longer than I have. Where it's like, man, you come in and like, damn, I, I just like I said, I don't compete with people. Like I was like, I just people are like, 
but I hate it when girls like bring competition to me. Cause I'm like, I don't even know you. Like, why are you starting these, this combat, like this false competition? And like now it's like, oh man, it's like. It's so gross. It I is gross. gross. It's gross. They'll walk past me while I'm talking to someone and they'll like eye the dude that I'm with. And I'm like. I'm like, if that's what you, I mean, you can come over here if you want to. Like you want to like sit, cause I just, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I feel like that's where we're headed to. And I'm like, damn, like I don't, I don't compete. I, I just, I don't like, that's just not it's my. mind fuck. Let it go. Let it, it go. Is. Yeah, You just have to let it go. You the, know what? That's it. Here's like the thing though. I like, I enjoy like the actual aspect of dancing. I enjoy my job. I enjoy like the women that I do meet that I know I would never meet in life just outside of just doing that specific work. Right. Like you and me we already have, like I met you even before. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, wow. Well, like, you know, but then to find you there, it's like, man, like all these women who come from different walks of life, comedians, people who want to do like are like, there's so many different types of women like I've met working in the club that, that I knew I would never have access to if I never stepped foot in a club. Absolutely. And it can be a very beautiful thing. Oh, no, no. Look, don't get it twisted. I like turning people on. It turns me on. Like, what's interesting is when I'm in that lap dance, it's not you I'm, I'm thinking about as I'm creating these compositions and these images that you'll be masturbating to fucking five years from now. Okay? Right, exactly. I'm, I'm turned on by myself and my mm -hmm. own sexuality because, like, I don't know. I could have never done it at 23 either. I didn't start dancing until I was 32. Yeah. I didn't know who I was sexually until I was 32. And, like, even after COVID, like, I saw some of these girls that I kind of envied before it, you know, because of their, their body types and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And when they came back, like, they don't even look like themselves anymore. And it was, it was because they were dancing for, I don't know, something else other than what I was dancing for. Yeah. Because, like, when I, it, nobody's going to feel you if you don't feel yourself. You oh, know? yeah. If I'm up there doing the best, like I said, I get people the girlfriend experience. I'm like the girlfriend you'll never have or ever had. And I'm like, oh, like, because I, I like, I, I feel like I, I feel myself. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's not too many other jobs that you're going to walk around and tell guys, like, I need $150. <laughs> and, the, and drop that, like, drop in, like, the matter of, like, three minutes, right? Three to six minutes. Absolutely. You know what I did? Oh, my God. Okay, we have to give. Okay, oh yeah, we so did. we're, we we're running yeah. out of time. Sorry. But give it. You got to give us your last good story. My last good story. The one that you were going to tell me. Okay, yeah. So uh, this last good story. Um, all right. I'm five nine, buck seventy five, maybe, maybe, maybe. But like a delicious. Like when I t when you got delicious one seventy five. I, I don't I've know that you. that's true. I haven't weighed myself in years, but like I've seen you naked. <laughs> everything fits so well i'm like there's just uh. god was nice to me and um or whoever <laughs> right right exactly i'm all you, know, you got you are one of the favorites i see i apparently like i don't know like i i just got a butt like two years ago naturally i don't know yeah. i have no idea what to do with it i i, I didn't have one like all my life and then all, all of a sudden, sudden just all boom you know it was like all those Seven Eleven late night snack <laughs> their pizzas and yeah. their fucking coffee and shit All, now i'm knocking shit off of tables i don't know <laughs> like um but um at my age and your time is what they're paying for mm -hmm. because the investment that women make in men are it's so much different than what women i mean men make in women right mm -hmm. you care about somebody like what's best for them you know what i mean Anybody that comes in that club, I'm looking out for you first. Right. And it, it's such a weird thing, like, because I'm an honest stripper, I, I try to disarm them with my honesty. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work out because, like, like I've had guys overpay me and, like, it's so weird to be like, hey, I know my pussy was just in your face, but here's your money back. <laughs> <laughs> I get that, too. Or some people are like, oh, my God, like, here is, like, extra. I'll just, just keep giving you. I'm like, oh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to take it. As long as you know you're giving it to me, I'm going to take it. it. Yeah. yeah. I'm not like I know people who, like, rob dudes. And I'm like, I can't, I can't just, mm -mm. I can't rob some. That's bad. That's bad. That's no, bad because karma. it goes back and forth. Um, International Horse Day, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Horophobia is a, a big problem. And it's, it's, it, horophobia is against all sex workers, right? Because the thing is, with sex workers, like full service sex workers, society, we're the 
they're the bottom rung of society. And um, black trans sex workers mm-hmm. are the, like, that is, nobody cares It's about. like the lowest on the. Yeah. And then from there on up, people care a little bit more g- given their situation, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that is so wrong because it is the oldest profession that men, it, it, it's a, like a profession that people have been using women to make millions of dollars that they never get to see. Pimps have been, women have been so taken advantage of, traded in for younger models, et cetera, et cetera. The investment that they make, the, we make life with our bodies. Mm-hmm. And when a woman does that for a man, like the like they're not that grateful for it. In fact, if they can switch out and get a new one, they will. Dr. Drew always says. Good old Dr. Drew. He's like, um, people are as faithful as their options. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna stand by. He might have been wrong about a couple things, in, you know, this last like, year. What happened to him? I don't know. But he, him and Adam Carolla were like my best friend. Never mind. And, but. Yeah, I got to wrap this up. So um, I think I'm just going to tell you guys a joke. Tell us a joke. Hit us with the joke. Yeah. I feel like we've been... I, I don't think a lot of people also realize, too. I think I'm very sarcastic. I think you're very sarcastic. So I feel like this conversation, like, we don't, some of this wasn't funny. No, it was. It was all. I think it was entertaining. I was very entertained. And I'm entertained, too. You always entertain me. So my sales pitch, right? Yes. Let's hear your sales pitch. Okay. So people go to the strip club for an experience, right? So I tell them, okay, so I do this trick and lap dances, all right? I, I call it the ventriloquist. Mm-hmm. But I'm, um, okay, I'm not very good at throwing my voice and I don't know what a pussy could tell you that wouldn't terrify you. Like what, you know, call your mother, you know, like, no, it's like, uh, so now I call it the silent movie. And if you look real close, you can see, um, subtitles there in French. (laughs) I love it. I would, you could, I'd pay to see that show. Like if you ever see me like, uh, in a lap dance, we're just like bent backwards, you know, and kind of like with my hands, like in that area, I'm doing the ventriloquist. <laughs> I'll be walking by. I'm like, oh, she's doing it. And the the look in guys' faces is just so priceless. It's just like. They don't. No, man. No, I don't care how old you are. There is no man who knows what to do if a girl is just like, I'm going to pop this shit right on open in your face. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. It's right here. It's there. What are you going to do with it? They're, they don't know what to do. Honesty and pussy, like very disarming traits. You know? Yeah, like, they don't know what to do. I've been bluntly honest with guys. I've been, I bluntly like, I'm like, all right, bro. I, you know, give me my money, like you, whatever. And they're like, oh my God. Like, oh my God. Like, I don't know what to do. Like they, like they shut down. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great. And it's to, nice. Yeah, it's nice. And I, I will do this until I break something. I think, I don't know. <laughs> Cause I don't think I've been at that club long enough. I don't think they're ever going to be like, uh, go home. Yeah. No, they're never, no, number one, look at you. Yeah. There's girls who are like 27, 28. They're, oh man, there's some girls in there. They've had some, and you know, you don't know what people's lives have been. You don't know what they put themselves through. But then again, like you said, that partying, that alcohol, that like going super hard in the paint. There's girls in there that are like, they, 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 they look. You they, are what you look like what you are on the inside. And you know what? This, this career fucks you up on the inside if you let it. It does. It does. That's why you got to find people that you do and find things that you like to do. Have a life outside the club. Yeah. Don't make that your do all end all. Don't make that like your everything. That is your, that is your power and your, it's your stepping point to something that's going to be fulfilling for you because living off the compliments and cash money of like other people, it's not going to last forever. Your tits are going to drop. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, it, the, the, like, there's always going to be a younger girl. Yep. There's always going to be a younger girl. There's always going to be a new style. There's always going to be something that you can't produce. And neither should you try and feel like you should have to keep up with it. No. Uh, and work on yourself. Work on your inside. Because yeah. you know what? Like, I can, I can, I can impress a guy from Yale. 
You know what I mean? That's like another thing too. Yeah, you can impress an Ivy League man. And those are the best people that you want to talk to because not only are you learning from things, something from them, but that's a part of, that's that's like a society of person that is coming into like what people think is like. Upward mobility. That's a white, he was a white guy with the Ivy League education. And it wasn't that I needed him, Mm -hmm. but I needed that upward, I want his upward mobility, which I cannot get inherently because I am a woman, I am a sex worker, but the fact that he believes in me, Mm -hmm. that's all I needed. That's all you need sometimes. It's like, damn, I guess I am like, shit, I am the shit. Fuck y'all. I'm, fuck your upward mobility and all. I'm still that bitch. You know, I will find your friends and I will fuck them. (laughs) Wait, who, where, who's your father? Cause we know he he, can't get hard anymore. right, Right. You know, um, we're com- I'm coming to Christmas. I'm going to make a shout out to Tori. She's in Dallas looking for the love of her life. <laughs> you know what, Tori? You go, girl. I miss you. What was it for Mean Girls? You go, Glenn Coco. You go. You glow, go, Tori. You, know, you go. F- do your Anna Nicole out there. Find the love of your life. You know? Do it. Dallas is the place to do it. But shout out to Tori. We miss you, girl. So much. So and shout outs to you. Where can we find you? What are you going to be doing? When's your next show? I know you just had like a string of shows this past week. I did um the next show that i'm gonna be doing is a live stream for the satanic temple for their pride um uh, they have the, the satanic estate so if you look up the satanic temple they're they're not what you think they are they are free speech advocates hardcore they're in court all the time trying to keep um people's rights and anonymity free i have a, a incredible amount of respect for everybody there you know Mm -hmm. and i in fact last night i was like you know i really need i really need a community (laughs) i guess it's gonna be the temple you know (laughs) Um, satanic temple here i come yeah i was like oh my gosh because they're they are they're great people and and they got that upward mobility that i'm looking for you know honestly and um as long as you're doing it and you're doing it on the up like the upward mobility on the up and up as long as you're on the up and up in life Right. And that shit takes time. Everyone's everyone's time is different. Yeah. So they're going to have a pride event at the end of this month. Um, go to their website. Um, join the state. I will be watercoloring and telling jokes for an hour. Perfect. That sounds like a great time. Can I bring my watercolors? Oh, yeah. No, they would love that. <laughs> On their mo. Hey. Yeah. No, they're... I'm, I feel really grateful for them. And the Mercury Cafe has always supplied me, like, with lots of stage time. And um, they're one of the last relics in Denver of like what old Denver was and like where all artists begin to grow. Right. Right. And where can we find you? Are you on social media? I know you like to live off the grid. Okay. Yeah. So (laughs) my Instagram is hilarious. Now, most people demand that I have more pictures of like my body, but Mm -hmm. like I'm too funny for that. Yeah. I'm cute and I'm funny, but so my, my Instagram name is Boosh bag. Okay. (laughs) Now here's the thing. Boosh is spelled B zero zero S H. Okay. Bag. <laughs> okay. So like Boosh bag. All right. All right. I, I had it with the O's initially, but then my phone died right when I was creating the account do- and I'm never going to get it back. I'm not changing it at this point because there's only one of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Boosh bag. Yep. Um, and that's, uh, that's a great place to, to locate um, and contact me if you want to. Yeah, book, book me for you, a show or, or even just talk to you yeah i mean not really i mean it depends <laughs> like what do you got to say i don't well, know you don't want dick pics nobody wants a dick pic yeah like if and if, if it's like the subject lines and it looks like a baby arm or, oh, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, no 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 it's, we're good we're good i've seen i'm 37 years old i've seen all the dicks the world has to offer You're me obviously not. <laughs> like there, nothing you got is gonna surprise me uh unless it's gonna terrify me oh and god i don't know what I, to do with it you know like uh, nobody no vaginas are pretty no but nobody wants to see you know it's interesting I've, I've always wanted to start a band called pretty dick let's start it yeah. i'll be in there I, i'll play the i'll be a growler or i'll fucking throw the tra- tam- tambourine what kind of music are you playing i don't know but our t-shirts are gonna be richard nixon and drag i'm here for it <laughs> sign me up i am here for it and on that account gloria titania gloria oh, how did how should i say it? gloria well the djs call me titty on you so i mean i let them run with it it's shakespearean nobody there gets it not a big deal you know um, <laughs> no one's going for the shakespeare we're going for the 
the tits. All right. Well, I guess until next time, love. It's always it's always a pleasure chatting with you. Can't I, wait to see. I guess I'll be seeing you at work soon. I hope you have me back. I think we should take callers because that's been my dream. Well, you know we're gonna do that. We're gonna have a live. I'm gonna we're gonna start doing the live show. I'm doing a live talk show. If How I start taking exciting. callers, we are going to get shut the fuck down. And that's what I live for. Oh, man. I can't My w- show's already kind of like, they don't even want to post this shit half the time. Really? Like Apple Music and shit. They're like, it's a little too risky. Yeah, no, they don't. They, I, they I mean, I'm a comedian. So many comedians have piece of shit podcasts that I listen to <laughs> that like aren't interesting at all. You know, um, you just like that person. You're like, I like you. Yeah. Um, but I, I, th- I think we should do. I think we should do it. I like it. Yeah, no, I want to. I want to give people good adv- stripper advice. You know, and then, like a stripper advice column. I think we need to have a panel. I think we need to have like another girl, and we need to give advice. Right. You know, maybe we can set up like an email, and then have people, in, and then we'll call them. Call them and answer their questions. We're on to some shit. All right, you guys. Until next time, stay hustling, my little bunnies. It's always great to hear from you. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you or your company are looking to jump into the podcast world, now is the time. The Plug Agency is here to connect you to the full power of podcasting. You just record and leave the rest to us. The people are listening and want to hear from you. Theplug-agency.com. That's theplug-agency.com. Click the link in the episode description for an exclusive offer.